Good afternoon, this is Schweitzer, and we're going to take a look at a little video, a little video here on what's called relative motion. This is not a very challenging topic, but just some stuff that we do every day that we want to make sure that we're sort of up to date on and we can do easily and it makes sense to us. Um, and uh, sometimes the best way to see it is to just um, try it. So I understand it, try it. So just kind of read this over. I'm assuming you've read this right. We have Blake here. We have Carlos here. We have Angela who's standing kind of here and just sort of looking at this. The train's moving to the right. Um, identify and label the direction to be positive. Okay, so I'm going to go to the right as being positive east. That's pretty standard. Okay, sketch a motion map based on Angela's measurement of Blake's motion. So Angela's measurement of Blake's motion. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, because um, Blake's on the train relative to Earth, Blake has a movement going to the right of 2. The train is going to the right 5. So relative to the Earth, which is where Angela is, then she sees a motion that is 7 meters per second. Okay, So that's what she sees. Okay, Carlos, she sees traveling at 5 meters per second, same as the train. So what is a motion map? If you aren't aware of it, we do a bunch. Um, but basically, we're going to take Blake, and rather than drawing a, a whole body of Blake, you know, out like that, we're going to represent Blake just as a dot. That's pretty common. And then we'll use a vector to sort of show this length. And I'm going to draw this guy here as being sort of Blake moving. And I could just draw the same. I could copy and paste this thing if I wanted to, but I would just draw essentially the same. I don't want to change the the length of the vector because, well, um, Blake's not changing his velocity, it's staying the same. There's no acceleration or deceleration on this thing. Okay. Um, and again, it's like a. It's sometimes they call this stop animation. This is really what this kind of looks like. Stop animation. And that would be something that you know is right up the alley what this is de describing. Every time frame is like one flip of a page or a certain amount of time. This could be one second. This could be from here to here could be one second. So shows yeah, shows shows what's happening over time. Okay, um, sketch a motion map based on Carlos's measurement of Blake's motion. So here's Carlos and Blake doesn't care about the earth. Doesn't care about um, to Angela, um, he just knows once in a while to him. Okay, so in this situation, it's smaller. It's just two. Blake just see Carlos just sees Blake traveling at him at two. So if they brought, if this length is seven, then maybe we want to do something a little bit shorter to represent um, this motion. I have it right here. It's just this guy. Okay, and that's basically it. You can draw as many as you want uh, as we move along here. All right, keep them all short, and they all should be the same. This one got a little bit long, um, so I'll just make it a little bit shorter. And there we go. Ideally, if I wanted to, I could copy and paste these little guys, and they'd be identical. But I get you get the point. Using diagram part A, turn Blake's speed relative to Angela, and we just did this right here. So that's this explanation right here. Um, 2 plus 5 equals 7. Um, you, can, you can write that out if you want. Blake now turns around and runs the other way. Okay. Use the diagram at the right to determine Blake's velocity relative to Angela. Okay. So now, uh, this really is primitive addition of vector addition. Really what this comes down to, vector addition. So I have a vector that going this way now at 2. They change things up a little bit. So uh, I have a vector going this way, that's 5. And to add them up, we just they can cancel. And my net vector is just this way at 3. Okay. So you can write down um, 
use the diagram to right determine that, and it would just be plus 3. You can see my work to the bottom right hand corner. Okay. Um, all right. Not too bad. And then we're going to the next guy here. So they changed it up a little bit. Change the speed of the train, change, uh, you know, how he's moving. And they got an extra observer here, apparently. Um, but Blake's still running. And it says, in both cases, Blake is running on the train as it travels. In which case is Blake's speed relative to the ground the greatest? So relative to the ground here. Okay. So let's just add these vectors up. I got 20 going this way. And I got 10 going this way. So you hook head to tail, and the head would go here. Um, so I'm just putting right next to each other. This is 20. Head to tail means it would go right like that. And when you add them up, they cancel, and we have a negative 10 relative to the ground. Here, I got a 10, hook head to tail. That's how a vector action works. Two 10s. I don't have them proportional, but this is going to be a 10, and a 10 equals 20. A positive 20 relative to the ground. Okay, so circle the one that's got the largest velocity relative to the ground, positive or negative. There you go. And in this case, they're doing speed, which just basically means a positive or negative does not matter, just straight up movement. Um, all right, so circle the parts of each student argument, the correct parts. Okay, so. Um, Blake says, I'm running fast uh, in case A, therefore I will appear to be moving the fastest to the ground, compared with the train. Um, well, he is moving the fastest in part A, I guess that's correct. He's moving fastest, like he's actually moving his legs the fastest. But relative to the ground, yeah, that's not so much. No, Carlos is uh, must be on the side here. Carlos, no, the train does not matter. But since 20 plus 10 is greater than 10 plus 10, uh, you are right. Case A is where Blake is the fastest. Okay, well, I guess you could say the, these numbers are right, but they're missing the, the directions. Uh, this would be a negative. This is positive. This is, and this is, yeah, this is 20, two positive. So this person's missing not much here. These numbers are right. But they don't have the science right. And Angela, if you look at hers, uh, she's describing what, in fact, we are doing. Therefore, she is correct. So we could just circle her whole thing. All right. Thank you.